This is the zombie chopper. I call it the zombie chopper because it would totally work in a zombie apocalypse. No gasoline needed. It's got solar panels, electric motor. It's got a 24 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery up in the front here. And uh, the zombie chopper. The chopper part is because the front, front of the hole there is real sharp. So if it were to hit zombies, it would chop right through them, right? Here, let me, let me show you a few of the details. Four 216 watt solar panels that can tilt. And it's just kind of stiff, so wherever you put it, it stays. Obviously, so you can aim it toward the sun. Up here, I've got a 24 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate made by SOK. I am super happy with this thing. It is really good. Back here, I've got a roughly one horsepower motor. It's made by Leeson. They've been really good too. And I had no problems. This is a bunch of junk I scrapped together. There's a propeller shaft that goes down to a fiberglass propeller I made. And then up here, I've got all the switches and stuff. Got a main power kill switch and then three speeds. I'll show you that when we go driving. And right here is the charge controller to charge the batteries from the solar panels. Some of the solar panels, two of the solar panels charge the battery through this. The other two connect directly to the motor through a little switch up here. My three speeds here work in a pretty unusual way. First, this switch I just made out of copper pipes. It's basically indestructible, never has any problems. I love this kind of caveman electronic stuff. It, it just doesn't break ever, right? So if I switch into the first slot here, electricity runs through this nichrome coil of wire. Nichrome wire has, you know, relatively high resistance. So it slows down the electricity, runs the motor at a slow speed. Now if I switch up to the second slot there, it only runs through half of this coil, which means I go faster and that's my middle speed. But then if I switch it all the way up to here, that directly connects the motor to the battery to get the maximum efficiency. Now obviously these side pontoons keep the whole thing from tipping over, but sometimes I can't fit into a parking spot. However, if I pull this up, I can slide them in and make the boat skinnier. Or I can pull them up this way. If I really need to get skinny, I can pull them way in. Like that. But usually I drive kind of in the middle. It also makes it so I can change the, the buoyancy point in the boat. So if I have a lot, of, a lot of cargo in the front, I can slide the pontoons a little far forward. If I have a lot of weight in the back, I can slide these a little further back and just kind of level things out. And, uh, oh, i got one other thing to show you. Check out how sweet the steering is. It's a little rack and pinion that turns the rudder back there. Oh, beauty. And it's right where my hand sits if I sit in this chair. All right, let's shut up and go for a spin. Oh, I shouldn't forget my uh, fancy paddle here. Get off the beach. I don't actually have reverse. This is such a small boat, it's easy to move. I can just paddle reverse on the odd occasion I need to. Mostly just when parking. It's also really comfortable to put your feet up here. All right, main power on. Low speed. I built this boat originally about eight years ago, and I've done a bunch of modifications since then. And right now, I think I've got it set up really, really good. Wow, it's cranking up. cheap because it makes this squeaking sound once in a while. It's doing it right now. However, 
it doesn't seem to be a problem. I've run it for hours at a time.